Hey everyone, this video is going to be a little bit different because I'm doing this little voiceover for the first part. I decided to collect GWSN, so I have this little thing here with their names, so I spell it right and their official colors. I'm going to be making templates for my binder today, or like filler cards that go in spaces of the photo cards I don't have yet. So I'm using this size, which is the 55mm by 85mm, to make a new file in Photoshop. And since I haven't used a size like this before, I'm going to be making a new um, printing guide for it. So I'm just changing the color here so I can tell the difference between it and the page. And then I'm going to make a new document that's a 8x11, which is like normal uh, printer paper type of size, which is uh, most printers are that print that size of paper and I'm just going to go in here and put um, a few of these down and kind of situate them where I want them so that I can do some guides and so this is what it looks like when I had that done and um, the guides are kind of just to show where I need to put the templates when I after I make them and I'm gonna put show my rulers here because I don't have that on at the moment and guides you just drag from the ruler in Photoshop so that's what I'm going to do on each um, different color there so I'm gonna put one there and then one there and that's gonna be like one card where I would cut it if that makes any sense to anybody. So I'm just going through and putting all of the guides down for the fillers. And here I had to get rid of the middle so I could see where the middle ones needed to be. There's probably a lot of like easier ways than what I do in Photoshop a lot of times, but it's, it's just what works for me, so that's what I do. And I realized I was missing the last one at the end there. So this is what it looks like now. If I get rid of those, you can see that there's guides there that'll help me place the fillers. And now I'm going to make a uh, print line, so I'm just using the like little uh, selection tool for like a line, and I'm going to fill it in, and I'm just going to put that one there, and then I'm just going to copy it, since it was on a new layer, and move it over to where I need it in the next spot, and just keep repeating that until I get all of the lines in place. Okay, here I'm just taking the line and rotating it to do the horizontal guides. So the only purpose of these really is when I print it out, it goes almost to the edge of the page so that it makes it easier for me to see the cut lines since I use a big paper cutter that you will see later in the video. Like this is probably really boring for most of you, but this is just what I do whenever I make have to make a new one of these pages and then I like just save this and I'll reuse this multiple times with different things. I don't do this every time I make fillers. This is just um I had I'm making a different size of fillers this time, so I decided to make one and here I'm just making sure that it goes all the way to the edge and I don't know which line's which, so I'm trying to figure it out in the um, layer panel over here on the side. I'm 
just making sure that everything goes to the edges and like just like that that one is not so I have to go back and find that one again all right it looks like I got it all now so I'm gonna hide the guides and now you can see that I have the lines there that go all the way to the edge and then this I'm going to make them all one smart object and then just uh, make the layer simple and rename it so I know what the layer is and I believe I changed the uh, how light or dark it is so that it's not completely black and now I'm going to start making the actual fillers so I'm starting off I really like this font but for some reason like the Y kept doing this thing where it's like becoming thinner than the rest of the letters and I didn't want it to look like that and no matter what I did it just kept changing once I was done messing with the font and I, I don't know why so I do eventually um, decide to use a different font Like, it looks fine, and then I, like, accept it, and it's like, nope. Okay, and here I'm going to be making a new uh, gradient. That's the GWSN, like, their official colors, so that I can use it in the design. And I'm just going to make a custom one so that it's just saved in my Photoshop now and if I ever come back to doing anything for GWSN and need the colors it's just saved already. So I'm just adding all of the colors here and trying to get it pretty even just by looking at it and then I saved it to the wrong place so I'm moving it. Alright and now back to the filler card. I'm just looking at um, layer styles, which is where I'm getting, where I'm using the gradient at the moment, and just seeing how things look. This is what I usually do. It goes through like a million different uh, revisions, I guess, before I'm finally happy with something. I'm putting like a drop shadow on it that I eventually take off because I don't like the way it looks. And here's where I decide that like I can't deal with that font. And I'm just going through my fonts to find one that I want to use. Most of my fonts that I use are from a website called thefont.com. It's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. I'll link it in the description if anyone's interested. I've used this website for fonts for years and years and years now. It's just my go-to. And a lot of times I use cursive for my uh, fillers but I end up using a different font that's not cursive for once but I think it really fits with their own like design that they use a lot in their albums so I'm going to do a selection and make a new like gradient layer and use that gradient I had made before and I'm using um, masks in Photoshop which is something that's really fun to do um, to learn about and use it makes a lot of things a lot easier and so I'm just kind of making like a border around the edge of the card and then I go back and decide that it's too thick and I make it a little bit smaller And now I'm just messing around with some brushes to see if there's anything I could do to like give a little bit more um, style and make it more interesting. And I finally decided on these like um, half tone type of brushes, and I'm just putting them around the edge. 
I'm kind of not um, doing it in any particular way. I just want it to look kind of like it's um, naturally there, I guess. Going back and just getting rid of the um, most of it that's on the inside of the border. Okay, and now I'm going back to the font. And I'm going to do something else with it. I decided to use um, So Kyung's name. I probably butchered how you pronounce that. But since it is one of the longer names, I wanted to go ahead and figure that part out. Because um, since the name is longer and bigger, it'll take up more space and I want everything to be the same size. So I'm going to mess around with this name and... Um, eventually get the final style that I'm going to use on the fillers and so I just I copy the text and I am going to um, clear the layer style Sometimes I just can't find things. I don't I've been doing this for years. I don't know what's wrong with me and So I'm going to do a, a gradient overlay using that gradient and Then here I'm just kind of like Scooting it over so that it just peeks out from behind the black letters And then I realized that the font has like a italic and I think and I was like, oh, that looks cool. And so this is kind of what I do, but I switch the italic on the uh, rainbow color and put it in the background instead. And I think it looks really nice. Okay, so this is what I end up using is the rainbow in the back and then the black font in the beginning. Um, I made the fonts a, a smart object layer which means you can go in and edit it and then I'm copying it to make a new one and changing the name. And I am just going to do that for each member now since I decided on a final template design and now I just have to go in and change all the names. And this is why I use smart layers because it keeps the, er keeps the um, layers from getting too big and I can keep adding them and they're easily edited later and I'm just re renaming them so I know which name it is. So this is just the process. I will be doing that with each member and i um, going to do a time lapse so it goes by really fast. Okay, I have all of the names now and now I will be putting them on my page. So I'm just uh, flattening this and copying it over to my template page over here and I just uh, put it in the guides and then I copy it again and do a row and then I'll copy the whole row and then do that and I'm just trying to line it up and eventually I don't I don't really line these up that well honestly or my guides were off I'm not really sure but it doesn't matter in the end Now I will do um, these three into a smart object and copy it twice and bring those down all together. And so this will be my first page that I will print out. I'm just looking to see if everything's lining up okay. And then I will just do the same thing with all the other members as well and then I'm just going to um, 
make it easy since I need eight uh, fillers for each member, except for Soso since she wasn't in the last album. And I'm just going to have nine, so I'll have like some extra ones for the next comeback or whatever. So I'm going to rosterize that layer. And so there's uh, Mia's. And now I'm just going to go through all the other ones really fast. I'm just doing the same thing where I'm copying it over into a new layer and doing three and then um, copying those and moving them up and down and everything. I'm really bad at explaining this stuff, but um, hopefully you understand what I'm saying because you're watching me do it at the same time. Okay, so now I have all of my member pages and I'm going to print them out. Um, when you print, you just want to make sure that it is at 100% uh, and not like scaled fit or anything like that. Hey guys, so this is the paper that I use most of the time when I'm printing off my um, filler pages. It's just white cardstock that I buy at Walmart. It kind of like tears out of the book here. But I think it's like $5 or something. It's meant for scrapbooking, so it's over with like the scrapbook stuff. And then here is the placeholders that I made printed out. My cat's walking on the table and making everything shake. Yeah. So this is what they look like before I cut them out. This is why I use this kind of paper. Is It's thicker than normal paper, so it holds up better. And then I have this paper cutter that I use. It's this brand here. I all got this also at Walmart. You just put the pages in and slide this and it will cut them straight. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So these are the cards now that I have got them all cut out, they're ready to go into my binder now. There's my little stack. I do also have um, this little cutter that I found that makes rounded corners. You just stick a corner in like this and it makes it round. Which I do a lot of times for these kind of things, but because I did like a square design for these, um, I think I'm just going to leave the corners square. I think it'd look weird if I tried to go in and cut because it would take off a little bit of the like corner there. Maybe not very much, but I don't, I'm just not sure how it looks, so I don't want to do it and then not like it. So I'm going to get my binder and we're going to put these in now. So here's my binder right now. I need to do an updated um, binder tour. I have to do um, my wide angle camera so that it's able to see all of it. So I've already put this in 
and I've started with these placeholders now since GWSN has seven members. Um, I do have like one over here and all of the albums have two sets, so one set here and one set here. This first one I believe has a group card. I think I'm putting them in age order. I think. Okay, so this is how they look in a binder now. So right now, this is how I'm going to do my GWSN part of my binder with all of the cards for each album, like this. And so that's how I make my placeholders and um, use them in my binders. I like doing this because I like seeing a visual representation of where photo cards will go once I have them in my binders. And I also just like having the spaces full, like with my bandit cards. I have this one. This is one that I put the rounded corners on. This is the last card that I need for bandit and I just cannot find it anywhere. But uh, I like having a spot for that card. Thank you guys for watching how I make my binder fillers and hopefully it helped you out a little bit if you're looking on how to make some for yourself and i will see you in the next video